Hey there guys, welcome back to yet another installment of the never ending DIY chicken coop project. I think this is officially part five and as you could tell from the title, you already know what it's about. But I'll also give those of you who just clicked on this without reading the title a chance to study this picture and let me know if there's anything different that you notice about the coop. Anything different, anything. All right, yes, you got it. There's some makeshift gutters, PVC pipe, a rain barrel filled with water, and I don't know if it's visible, but some watering cups for the chickens. So that's what I'm gonna cover today. Obviously, <laughs> mustache too, I know. Just a little temporary thing. But anyway, let me get to that. But before I do, I wanna say thank you to my sponsor, ButcherBox. I introduced you to them a few videos ago, but if you aren't familiar with them, they offer a subscription service for free range grass fed beef, humanely raised pork, free range poultry and wild caught seafood that you can get on a monthly basis. And if you stay tuned to the end, I will tell you about a promotion that they are having right now that you'll be very thankful for. So let's get to the meat of the video, pun intended.
So you just saw me install gutters on both slopes of the chicken coop as well as on the shade portion of the chicken run. You might be wondering what materials I'm using as my makeshift gutters. Well for the chicken coop I used inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter aluminum channel. I actually got this for a different project a while back but obviously ended up using it on the chicken coop because I liked the low profile and it didn't need to be that much capacity because there's only about 35 inches of roof space on either side that it's collecting from. And then for the shade portion of the chicken run, I simply joined two pieces of two inch by two inch galvanized roofing uh, flashing together. I used VHB tape, joined them like this, and then to secure them, I used a piece of two inch PVC and a, I think this is a two and three quarter inch screw. And I'll show you a couple clips of that right now. Um, how that secures on uh, so that the makeshift gutter doesn't collapse. Also, I uh, sealed the open end with caulking uh, just to keep uh, water from percolating through the uh, open seam of the gutter. Well now you've seen it in action and really just how simple the whole system is. From the makeshift gutters directing the water down to the PVC pipe and then onto the rain barrel. But I'm sure some of you may have the obvious question of why I don't have some sort of uh, screened covering over the PVC fittings to keep uh, leaves and other debris from getting in the piping. Well, that is because in the first version of this coop, I actually did that. And I found that once there was a few leaves and other debris on top of the uh, screened coverings, it just directed the water off of the PVC pipe and not into the barrel. So what I do now is just leave it open. And when I need to clean the pipe, I simply take that off, direct the garden hose through the PVC pipe, and then I'll take the fitting off the other side, cleans it all out. And then uh, I think I showed it before, but I have a little screened uh, little catch that is on the rain barrel. So that's where I get all the, the leaf debris that I can easily clean out. So now I will show you the watering cups and that portion of the system. All this fresh dirt. <laughs> Dust bath central. So right now we are moving from the rainwater harvesting component of this system to the actual part of the system that the chickens care about. And that is starting from the rain barrel, I have a threaded bulkhead fitting that is actually made for an evaporative cooler. I just tapped it in the bottom of this barrel and it connects to some PVC pipe down to a shutoff valve in case I ever need to drain this system during our rare, really hard freezes. 
and that goes down to a half inch irrigation fitting which has a little screened inlet and I'll open this so you can see it a little bit closer but that just keeps any uh, debris that might have gotten in the barrel from clogging up the waterer cups and it goes down into the ground over to the coop and then to the watering cups and that's what I'll show you now. Now we're in the coop yard where the watering cups are. You'll see the irrigation pipe comes up from the ground and connects to the PVC by way of the same fitting I showed you coming from the rain barrel. And then it goes up through this elbow to a one inch PVC pipe. And attached to this pipe, I have two chicken watering cups. These are the same style that I've used the entire time I've ever kept chickens. And I think they are really easy for the chickens to adapt to. There is a little yellow nipple in the middle of the cup and then the cup holds water. So it's kind of easy to train them to go after that. And every time they peck for water, they inadvertently hit the nipple filling up the water cup and they're easy to clean. You can simply twist them off like that and you can see just moving the nipple a little bit causes water to come out. Uh, I will say that the smaller diameter pipe uh, that you try to put these in, the harder it is. Uh, if you go three quarter inch, there's a good chance it's gonna leak. Uh, so I recommend going one inch or bigger just because there's such a tight curve on the pipe or doing it in a bucket would be good as well. And then on this side, I have just a little threaded end cap so I can totally open the system and let water flow through it in case any debris or algae or anything like that needed to be cleaned out. And uh, I'll try to show you some pictures of, or clips of the chickens using it right now. the end of that irrigation tubing that just runs down the hill a little bit from where the water tower is and I can simply just open this end and drain the whole system and I'll just use one of our traditional chicken waters while everything's drained and then once we get out of that hard freeze time I'll cap this back up and recharge the system. So I think that is pretty much gonna do it for the rainwater harvesting portion of this video or for this project. As for what is to come next in this build, well, I've mentioned a few times that I'm gonna be doing an electric fence with a solar panel and a battery. Uh, but I may be putting that on a uh, postponement because my daughter's kind of talked us into the potential of getting goats. And I kind of have some ideas of how I would like to connect the goat run or goat yard with the chicken coop run. So probably what'll be next in the chicken coop build will be uh, some sort of redesign of my feeder. I've made a couple ones in the past. I'll put a link to those videos in the upper corner of the screen. But uh, anyway, I just like to experiment with uh, different ideas and see what I can do with them. And before I let you go, I do wanna make mention of the latest promotional offer from ButcherBox, which is a free turkey for your Thanksgiving dinner when you sign up during this promotional period. I'll put all of the details down below as far as the dates and things like that. But I can tell you I have had their turkeys in the past on my own dime, and they are definitely worth it. No uh, antibiotics, all natural just basically very high quality meats like the rest of everything they sell. And I'm sure some of you are wondering, Joe, you raise chickens obviously for eggs, but why don't you raise chickens for meat? Well, that is because I don't eat my chickens. I would much rather eat someone else's chickens and Butcher Box's chickens are the ones I choose to eat. So as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Give this a thumbs up if you liked it and want to see similar content. And uh, I will see you guys next time.